How high is the threat of a Russian invasion right now? It's very high. Why? It's very high because they have not they have not moved any of their troops out. They've moved more troops in. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine, attack Ukraine. I, my sense this will happen within the next several days. Are well, there any well, diplomatic paths still available? Yes, President? there is. President Biden there yesterday warning a Russian invasion could happen in a few days. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said we are at, quote, a moment of peril in the Ukraine showdown. Remember, we showed you him live because he went to the U.N. He was supposed to go to Germany, and he, he cut into the program of the U.N. so he could follow the president of the Russian Federation. I mean, it's a pretty dire situation going on here. The Kremlin now has more than 150,000 troops. So if you do the numbers on that, of course they put more troops on the border, just since even last week. And it's along Ukraine's border in Russia and neighboring Belarus and occupied Crimea, because Russia's done this before. And if the tension were not high enough, Russia has announced the beginning of planned nuclear exercises. Steve Hilton, host of The Next Revolution, is in focus. Steve, first of all, just a reaction to the news coming together today, particularly that last part about nuke exercises. Well, look, what's going on is very clear. You've got a very high stakes game of chicken. Um, this is what's playing out. And you've got the Biden regime doing something we've never really seen before. And they're almost open about it now, which is they're trying to beat Putin at his own game of information warfare. That's what we've seen over the last few weeks, this steady drip of what they call intelligence. We don't know if it's real intelligence or actually manufactured intelligence as part of their strategy to try and say to Putin, we know what your game is and we're going to tell the world what we think you're planning to do in order to stop you from doing it. The problem is you're dealing with someone in Putin who doesn't play by any kind of rules. And so what they might actually end up doing, this is what I fear, is goading Putin into some kind of action simply to show that he's not weak and is not put off or intimidated by these tactics. And that's how I think we should see these nuclear, um, this nuclear news, is he's saying, I'm not going to back down just because you keep leaking to the world what you think I'm going to do. You don't know what I'm going to do. I'm better than you at this game. And that's what I think we're, we're looking at now, a very, very risky situation. Look, is he? Is he better at this game? Well, we don't know. I mean, that's the frightening thing mm. about it. Um, and the real point here is that the way to deter a bully like him, we've seen this throughout the years, decades, is through strength. And although the Biden administration, all their people may be patting themselves on the back that in the past couple of weeks, they've been stepping up, getting their allies together, yes. trying to mobilize some kind of resistance. What have they been doing for the last year? For the last Look. year, they've been showing weakness. They took the sanctions off the Nord Stream pipeline company. They've been cutting our military spending, our defense spending. Look at Afghanistan. Wherever you look, they have been projecting weakness, which has emboldened Putin. That's what he looks at in the long term. He also looks at the fact that the, here at home, the Biden administration is clamping down on our own domestic energy production. That's the most important long term thing oh, for that's... Russia, his ability to make money from his energy resources. So they've been get the Biden people have been getting it wrong for at least a year. It's a little bit late now to that turn around and say, look how strong we are. That is a point about watching us and what we do in terms of them filling their own coffers with cash via energy that they can sell back to the world. I mean, that is fascinating because we have now capitulated our, yes. ourselves into a point where we can't help our friends. We're closing pipelines. Exactly. We're putting pressure on Michigan Line 5. We're, we're doing everything and anything, it would seem, that would take away our own ability to help ourselves or anybody else in the energy sector, as it would appear right now. Maybe it can change. Probably not overnight. But this is an interesting patch sort of answer to, to what you inject into strategy, I suppose. How about sending Vice President Kamala Harris? Uh, she's going to Germany to meet with European leaders at the Munich Security Conference. The New York Post editorial board sensing there may be an ulterior motive for the trip. Here's what the Post writes. But Harris has next to no diplomatic experience beyond her laughable mission to address the root causes of the migrant flood at the southern border. Is this an attempt to burnish her standing on the world stage and reset her disastrous image at home? 
Recent polling shows some brutal numbers for the vice president. Only 38% of her home state voters approve of her job performance. California's as blue as you get. She's as Democrat as you get. And she only has friends 38% full. Yes, and, and by the way, that's a long tradition for her. Do you remember back in the days of the Democrat primary, before she pulled out of it, the last poll, I believe, in California, in her home state, showed her running, was it fifth or sixth? I can't remember exactly. Totally humiliating for someone from, from this very Democrat state, as you say. Look, I think that the problem here, Harris, is again going back to what we were just discussing. It's a very high stakes, risky situation. I don't think there's a single person here or in Europe in political leadership, military, strategic leadership, who really would believe that sending Kamala Harris to try and help with this situation is actually going to help the situation. Hmm. It may be intended to try and help her in some way. But what a terrible way to try and manage a crisis, to prioritize your running mate's domestic political standing. Is that what they're doing, though? Because it doesn't help her. And we haven't seen this administration, the White House at least, try to help her with her duties at the border and the like. And look, it's her job to do these things. But if you see somebody struggling, what we did see was that awkward video with President Biden professing love to and for her. Awkward few seconds, but it didn't help her. So now you put her on a bigger world stage. Real quickly, just because Germany is on the screen, and you mentioned the Nord Stream pipeline, right? Um, Germany, are, are they going to give that up so that we have a little bit of uh, leverage with Russia? I mean, are they going to be real NATO friends? What, what do you think? There was a really fascinating exchange in the press conference that Biden had with Olaf Scholz, the chancellor, I think it was last week, wasn't it, um, where Biden was incredibly clear to reporters questions on that. Yes, we, if, if, if he invades Ukraine, no more Nord Stream. They repeatedly asked the German chancellor at the same event, standing next to Biden, mm -hmm. he wouldn't even mention the words Nord Stream. He wouldn't back up Oof. what Biden was saying. And so the real problem is, with all of these things, you've got to look at the domestic politics. And in the domestic political situation in Germany, you've got a very, you've got a very shaky coalition. It's new. They together have a big majority, but all sorts of different competing partners in there, including the Green Party. And I don't know what well, they can agree on. They, they won't do the sensible thing, which will make them more energy secure and less reliant on on Russia, which is to reinstate their nuclear program, because the Greens are dead against that. They can't do that, so they are desperate for this energy, because their fuel prices are going up even faster well, sure. than ours. And as you mentioned earlier, we can't help them out, because no. Biden has clamped down on our production. It's a total mess and total, totally incoherent. All right, I'm going to move to this. Uh, President Biden repeatedly has blamed tangled supply chains for the 40-year high inflation surge, but a former Obama Treasury official is calling out President Biden in this recent op-ed. Here it is. Supply issues are by no means the root cause of our inflation. Blaming inflation on supply lines is like complaining about your sweater keeping you too warm after you've added several logs to the fireplace. The bulk of our supply problems are the product of an overstimulated economy, not the cause of it. The price spike has made its way into every part of the U.S. economy. Take a look at this. Costs for food, energy, fuel up across the board. Gas prices up by 40 percent from the same time last year. Democrats don't want to talk about this. Had one on my show just 30 minutes ago. They would rather talk <laughs> about anything else except for maybe yes. the border and Ukraine and a few others. But this is going to have long term effects now. They got to get this right. Yes, because once inflation gets out of control, and frankly, that's where we are now, it's incredibly hard to bring it back to where we want to see things without really hurting the economy by raising interest rates so dramatically, you push the economy into a recession. That's what we're looking at now. And I would add to the point that Steve Ratner made. He's quite right. He's not the only one, by the way. Larry Summers was also making the same point, which is that it was that rescue bill back last March, the giant multi-trillion dollar rescue bill, as they called it, that really pumped all that cash into the economy for Democrats' political priorities that overheated things, when the economy was actually, thanks to lifting of lockdowns, moving in the right direction anyway. There's another factor. It goes back to our previous conversation. A huge component in the inflation is the costs that have increased for industry. The biggest, one of the biggest components of costs for industry is energy. 
And so because mm -hmm. they've restricted our own domestic energy, that's contributed to rising energy prices. That fuels inflation as well. And you know, as you pointed out, who sees this and sees an opportunity in all of it are our enemies. And Russia's not exactly. the only enemy that we have. China's got to be watching, too. All right. Sit. The governments, not the people. Steve Hilton, so great to have you in focus on a Friday. Thank you very much. Great to, to see you, Harris. Friend. Thanks.